Continuing on with the TMCC Library Open Genealogy Lab Outstanding Guest Speaker Series, today we are pleased to present Stanley Kinsey. Stanley is the founder and CEO of Collectionaire, a cloud-based web app used to create an, a curated Best Memories Family Legacy Collection that can be intuitively navigated by all family members. Stan has enjoyed a media and tech-centric career over 25 years. He brought computer um, animation to Disney as Vice President of Operations and New Technologies for the Walt Disney Studios. Uh, he was co-founder and CEO of iWorks Entertainment, producing film and virtual reality projects worldwide with pioneers that included Jacques Cousteau and Prince. Uh, and he was CEO of wireless power innovator, Nigel Power, acquired by, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correct, Qualcomm? Qualcomm, that's right. Uh, Stan holds an MBA from Stanford University and a BA in mathematics from DePaul University. He is married with three children and resides in San Diego. Uh, Collectionaire is an online web app for organizing and sharing the best of your family's memories and mementos. It picks up where FamilySearch and Ancestry.com leave off, allowing you to organize and share all of the memories of current family members along with those of your ancestors, which might include digital photo albums, home movies, audio recordings, journals, PDFs, etc essentially anything that can be digitized for future viewing. So without further ado, I would like to offer a warm virtual welcome to Stanley. Okay, well, thank you, Suzanne. I really appreciate the intro. Uh, and I'm gonna do this in a couple ways uh, on, on this. Um, okay, so I'm gonna give just a, you know, they like to say on talking, tell them what you're gonna tell them, then tell them again or whatever. But uh, the, the, uh, the punchline of all this, the end product, I thought it's sometimes helpful I sort of, I'm going to go into the background of why we're doing this, but what you're going to end up with is this is the product, uh, is you have a family tree, your family tree, much like Ancestry, Family Search, and, and the others. Um, and indeed, when you click on a person, uh, you, uh, you get their information. So it's very similar to how these others work, but that's where it, where it kind of ends. I'll just click on one. This is my wife's. This is my wife. This is me in a better day. Uh, and um, uh, her deceased parents here. If I click on her mother, it opens up what we call a collection page, which basically allows us to archive every tidbit we ever got on this wonderful lady named Loretta Patterson Barber uh, from her heritage, other things. So I'm gonna tell you that, so that's really the product. Uh, it's as simple as that. And, um, and it's all in the cloud, meaning I could be pulling this up on any computer anywhere in the world, on my phone, my kids can do it, others can do it. So now with that, I'm gonna go back to the other presentation you started to see there and show a few slides. Can you see the purple one now on the intro to collection air? Yes, I can see it. Okay, so I'm gonna go into what this was all about and, and how we came up with uh, this product. Um, so. You know, as a little background, before we had digital photos, uh, life was was pretty easy. We put them in albums, photo albums, and we shared them. We didn't have much higher expectations. We didn't have a lot of photos because it was expensive to shoot hundreds of photos. But then when digital cameras came in, we started adding a lot more and you found those, you know, photo cards and drawers and things. And then when your mobile phone started taking photos, uh, many of us got out of control. And with that is a risk that we could lose uh, all of our best memories. Um, now, you talked about my career. I actually um, retired about four or five years ago. And, and one of the things I was most looking forward to was that our family had 100 hours. This is my immediate family. I'm not even, I, when I created this, it, there was no thought really of ancestors and genealogy. Uh, but you'll see where it all ties together. My thought was, I have three children. They're now grown. They're living in different parts of the country, how can I share this with them? So I had all this information, our best family, our, our, my wife, myself, the family together, the vacations, home movies, all this. How was I gonna put all this together? Uh, and initially, especially, specifically, each child had their own hobbies. This oldest daughter was a pianist and played actually competitive golf at Southern Methodist uh, High School and College. Um, and a lot of adventures in between, and then her wedding, which really prompted a lot of this. And I thought, how can I really pass on to her everything from her baby pictures to the best pictures we had of her growing up? There were thousands, of course, that she was in, but I really wanted to have maybe the best 50 to 100 pictures as a child. 
any artwork, other things, everything I had that I thought was really special she should have, how do I pass that on to her? Of course, we could have made an album. There would have been one copy of it probably and, and have passed it on, but it's a growing living item such as the wedding and the first child, those kind of things. So uh, not only did I have my children, but when I got into this, I realized um, we had just lost the lady I just showed you, Loretta, her mother, um, uh, my wife's mother. And she was a seamstress, she was an artist. Uh, she made her wedding dress out of her husband's parachute, uh, silk parachute. He was a, uh, a fighter pilot in the Korean War. Uh, she came out, she was from Oklahoma, came out during the Dust Bowl, car had four flat tires when she got here. It's an incredible story. And I thought, how do my grandchildren that I don't, I don't even have yet, how are they going to know about this lady? Uh, went on from there. We also had the boxes of all of my parents and siblings and home movies when I grew up. And we even had one scenario where my wife's uh, late grandfather, paternal grandfather, uh, actually held the world record in the 100 yard dash in 1926 while at Cal Berkeley. Uh, and I'm thinking his box was in the attic and I, we were lucky it wasn't thrown out. So we even had a very special story in the, in the family from that standpoint. And then finally, uh, you spoke a few moments ago, Suzanne, about writing your family history. Well, I was fortunate that some of my uh, relatives have already written up some of our family history. This is the Bryant family history, the first as you can see here in the in the text, the first uh, Bryant came here in 1645 from England, Stephen Bryant. And uh, I thought, how do I get this story into a, one collection? Our kids, my family, our, everything from our the home the kids grew up in to the vacations, everything in one collection. And I so, so that was the challenge that I faced. Um, it needed to have scanned prints. Uh, and I knew it had to be digital. Uh, because it had to be shared with everybody. So digital photo files, you can see all the different types of media that I really wanted to have in this collection. Uh, and, and this is all pretty new, this whole cloud thing and all this stuff, usually you would have these and they'd all be in your computer. And then you'd even wonder how to organize it there, let alone the idea that you could organize all this and share it with anyone in the family or friends. Uh, and now with my three kids circled here, we're in three parts of the country. We were still in San Diego. Uh, some of you heard we're moving now, and I'm actually coming to you from a hotel in Nashville where we're here looking for a home. We're moving the company to Nashville uh, from San Diego. Um, but my parents are from Indiana and still back there. They needed to see a lot of this information. Uh, and all of them were going to be used different, different platforms, some Windows, some Mac, some desktops, some iPads, mobile phones. I wanted to have a, a collection of our best memories that anyone could access anywhere, anytime. And so I knew it had to be in the cloud as stated. So uh, it also needed to be intuitively navigated, meaning that um, even though I might be able to create a system that I, I myself could find, I needed my 92 year old father to be able to jump on his computer and find any memory that we wanted. So it had to be intuitive. Um, so, as I started this process after, again, my retirement, I had things pretty well organized, as you can see, in a Windows computer on a hard drive. You can see the left folders for every year. On the right, we had subunits. So in 2010, I had every month and major event, those kind of things. Now, some of those things are worth, were worth archiving um, and some were not. But either way, someone would have no idea what's really, if I wanted to look for what was the best of my daughter from that, from one of my daughters from that year, you'd have to go through every year, every album. I mean, there's no way she's ever going to know what's in there that I think is special. Uh, I started pushing some things to the cloud. And of course, now with our phones, most everyone has learned that you probably are going to have to pretty soon use some kind of cloud storage. If you're on an iPhone, you might let these phones overload from your phone and up into iCloud. Uh, Google Photos actually is a much, a much easier photo program to use. And so I was using those as well. Um, so my first thought was with this problem, why don't I just push everything into Ancestry or Family Search or, or one of these? Um, but, but I found that they only, they really weren't geared to hundreds and hundreds of photos. They didn't store videos. They didn't store a lot of the collections that I, had for each person. They were great for grandparents. This is my paternal grandfather here, Glenn Kinsey. Fine for him, but not fine for my current family. Uh, 
I also, uh, so I decided to evaluate more of the cloud sites out there beyond iCloud and Google and see what was there. The one common thing that I found was a pretty cool basic capability. This is how almost all of these photo sites work. And so I see 30 buttons up there for chat already. Are there, should I stop for a moment here? Suzanne, are there any questions? You no, think that uh, everything that you see in the chat box, I was just po posting links for the students. Okay, so we're good. Okay, but please, anyone there, don't hesitate to stop me. I kind of just ramble on and go pretty fast. So, so here I'm showing you the basic concept, kind of of collection error, and the basic concept of these photo programs. And that is that this, this is a 2002 family vacation to Yellowstone and a dude ranch up at Yellowstone. This is the horses, campfire, that kind of thing. And I, we probably had four or 500 photos. And this is before digital uh, cameras were on our mobile phones. This was with a, one of the first digital cameras, but snapped away, of course, got my memory chips, what do we do all this? But that's a lot of photos and you, with digital, we all learn, we take a lot of bad photos. So what I wanted to do was kind of take those four or 500 photos and, and select maybe 50 good photos from that trip that was a good representation of the trip. So you can see that in Google Photos, the way you do that is you can create a new album and you go in and, and you, can you see my cursor when I move it, Suzanne? Yes, we can see it. Okay, so you can see that little check mark up in the corner, kind of hard to see here. But when you check each of these things, that's selecting that photo for inclusion in an album. So all of those get loaded in to what we would call a 2002 Yellowstone album. So that was cool. I found that. And so I could create albums. So now I had a series of, of albums to do that. And this would be, for example, a screenshot of my albums in Google Photos. The only problem is, I mean, here we are at the Dude Ranch and here we are uh, 15 years later for our Christmas holidays. And here's a picture of my mother's work and here's a family reunion and here's one of my, re I mean, not, none of these albums had any relation to the one next to it. There's no organization and no one had, it would take someone of my kids uh, a long time to figure out what's important or what's meaningful of these albums to their life, to the family life. So that was why I thought, okay, this is a good start. I can create these albums, but can't really bring meaning. Next came home movies. And we had, again, 100 hours of, of home movies back when the, you know, now we don't take many family home movies. We take video snippets on our phones, which is a whole different deal to, to work with. But you, you can remember, uh, those of you old enough, uh, like me, uh, that um, back in the in the 90s and uh, up to about 2005, we were all using everything that went from the, the old Betamax on the shoulder video camera in the 80s up to, um, to uh, small digital video cameras. And those, those tapes were two hours long. What do you do with all those home movies? So I looked at the different sites because these sites were different than the photo sites, uh, meaning that some of the photo sites allow you to stream meaning you, you upload the video to a site like Google Drive, you can just click on that and you can actually stream it as if you're watching Netflix of your home movie. And of course, that's what I wanted. But some of them had restrictions. Some of them cost more. Some only allowed a 20 minute movie, not a two hour movie. So analyzed all of those things um, with doing it. Uh, and I even found a really cool feature that some allowed you to actually enter like YouTube Vimeo and, and Google Drive allowed you to enter a start point for a home movie. So I found that like here, uh, my youngest daughter curtsying there at a Scottish Highland dance competition. Uh, she danced for like six years and won first prize one day, one time, one magical moment where she won first. And here it is 11 minutes, 17 seconds into this video. And I really wanted her to be able to see that because uh, it, was, it was a very proud moment in her young life. Uh, but it was deep in my assortment of home movies. So here was, I found an ability to not only go to this video, but to the immediate point in that video. So these things were all things I was understanding. And as I was searching for how I was going to archive all my family's movies. And in addition, you can see PDFs, slideshows, recordings. Uh, I was the guy who made all the slideshows for the kids' uh, uh, elementary school class and things like that. So. A lot there, but now I found I had this collection 
of uh, photos in some cloud sites, home movies in others, and PDFs and audio and let a third. And again, I may have known where this stuff was, but no one else had a clue. Uh, so the question is, what do I do? And, and after thinking about this for a few months, uh, I realized what I needed, and I thought it probably existed, but it did not. At least in three years, no one's told us that there's another program that does this. But we go here to, for example, the uh, collection of uh, my wife's late mother. Uh, and it's in boxes, it's in the other things. Uh, how could I take that and, and, and put it into something? I realized what we needed to do was what I showed you briefly. I needed to create a collection page in the cloud so that it could link to any uh, of the memories that she had. Um, and so we came up with this idea of a collection page. On the left, some quick links to a family search and ancestry. On the right, chapters and entries of things about her. Uh, but I then thought about it more and realized, you know, the family memories, our family vacations, this is my wife and myself, um, our memories, our dog and uh, uh, our home movies, they don't belong to me or my wife. Where am I gonna put those? And realized we needed a page for each family in addition to a page for each person. Uh, and lastly, this whole family history scenario of the, like this Bryant family history that goes back uh, to the 17th century and even further, how was I going to, to make this collection and bring it all together? So uh, the one common link uh, that I'm gonna show you this in a demo in just a moment, but we go back to that yellow, little Yellowstone uh, trip that we had. The one common link of all of these cloud sites, sites and this was the breakthrough concept for its collection air, is that 90% of all the cloud sites, whether it's Flickr, SmugMug, Google, Apple, uh, Forever, any of these, and the Vimeos, YouTubes, they all allow what's called a share link, meaning you can see it highlighted here in blue. It's, uh, if you're, I know if you're not a big computer user, this will get confusing, but it's not any more confusing than using Zoom, so you've already mastered that. Um, but you simply can get for any album that you create or even any photo in these cloud sites, a very specific share link such as here that the program Google in this case would give to us, uh, letters and numbers that when pasted into your browser, into Google or into Firefox or something, it takes you to that specific item. It doesn't show you the entire collection of the person. It doesn't show you any of the other albums. So if you had this uh, URL here, copied from this album, pasted that in the browser, you would see this album, but you wouldn't see anything else in the collection. And that became the key. So we, what we found is that all of them have this capability. Here's Flickr with their share link. Here's Smug Mug, here's Forever, Google Photos, Apple Photos. This is how you get the share link from each. And we have a lot of instructions on the site of how to do this. And what we realized is we could create our index here in Collectionaire. We could go to Google, simply get the share link for that and add it as an entry. If this was a great family vacation, one that was worthy of adding to our family, best family vacations chapter here, you can see, then I'm gonna get that share link. I'm simply gonna add it here and I'm gonna show you how we do that. And it becomes an entry in Collectionaire. Um, and then when you click on that, it opens up that album, my Yellowstone album that we showed creating before, um, takes us right to it and it opens it up and I see only that item. And anyone I share my collection air with sees only that album. So it became a beautiful way to do that. So now I'm gonna show you a demo. While I'm doing this, once again, I'll ask, are there any questions to this? While I'm bringing up the demonstration. Um, I have a question and I'll give the class a few moments to unmute and, and ask any other questions they have. Uh, but what happens if you have a, a Mac? Uh, does it work with like Mac photos as well? Uh, with a Mac? Uh-huh. Uh, yes, yes, it does. I will say this, of the top 10 photo storage sites, Apple's the toughest to work with. Uh, now, partly I was a Windows guy for 40 years or whatever, uh, and just switched to a Mac this year, uh, or I should say two years ago. Um, but Apple iCloud Photos, Apple likes to think they have their own way of doing things. And, and so it gives you less flexibility. 
but it does work. And I'll just say there's even short videos in our help section to allow that. And I may get into some of that later, but they're a little more tricky than others. Okay. Uh, so any other questions, Suzanne, before I start a little uh, demo? Nothing in the chat box, but class, do you, this is your, your chance to ask uh, first round of questions. Okay, well, I hope okay. we're not lost. I hope it's uh, clear. Um, when you uh, log into Collection Air, I could log out and log in again, but you get to this screen, which is the home page. And if I, once I log in, I actually go right to this screen, which is my family collection. What you're seeing here is this is, this is my little family. And um, down here are collections of other friends uh, that have shared their collections with, with me. Uh, and there are a few test collections, things like that. But you can see that if you had uh, cousins that had their own collection, they could share it with you so you could get access to it. This is my daughter. Um, this is actually, I actually organized Collection Air in Collection Air. That's a long story. But these are others. The Allen, you may have heard of the Allen County Public Library, Suzanne, you may have. It's back in Indiana, where I'm from, it's actually one of the best genealogy programs in the country. And, uh, and we've organized some of their archives as a trial here. But let's just stay with mine for the moment and tell you how it works. I'm gonna now take you to that first screen I showed you, which is my first personal family tree. So, and let me first talk about how you get around the tree. We've, it allows you, it's a pretty easy site to uh, build your family tree. Um, one good thing that is about to happen is we are, we've been asked to be a partner with Family Search, and uh, we are, nearing a point where you'll be able to import up to eight generations of your family search tree into collection air so you don't have to rebuild it. Um, we are hoping by late spring that we'll be able to have uh, you upload a GEDCOM file from Ancestry or elsewhere into collection air as well. Uh, but right now you could also build your tree. And remember the, the first goal of this is really your immediate family and recent ancestors and once you get back to, you know, before about someone born before the, uh, of 1900, you're probably gonna have um, far better information on them in an ancestry or family search because multiple people are going to add to those memories. But you can build them out in this collection as well. The way we move around very simply is, again, this is me, this is my wife. If I wanted to come over to my side of the tree, all I do to move to someone's own tree box is click that little triangle in the bottom left corner, and that takes me to that person's tree view, as you can see. And it's kind of like an hourglass. I have siblings that are on the tree, but when I choose my tree view, this is all about seeing media and memories. So I know that I'm most interested in those of my children and my new grandchild um, and of my parents and grandparents up uh, going back. So your immediate view, if I shrink it down a little bit, is three generations down, or excuse me, yeah, it would be three generations down and two up on the tree uh, from this standpoint. But if I were to look, for example, and click on my mother's triangle here to see her tree view, once again, we won't see her siblings, but she will see her five children and grandchildren. So you can see her tree view, even if I'm the favorite, just joking, uh, that the other four and their children all show up here. So she can see all of their memories here by pressing on her tree view. But although I love my siblings and their kids and I track some things on there, my life generally revolves around my kids and seeing memories from my wife's parents and mine. So we'll go back to, I'm gonna take us back now, zoom in, and we're going to go back to my wife's tree view. So that's kind of how we get around the tree. We build the tree and get around it. That's, in a, in, that's when we're editing the tree. But now let's go and how do we add to this tree the way I just showed you. Now let's take, for example, her father. Unfortunately, he passed away as well just a year ago. And um, so as I was building his collection, and I've, I've set up a little demo here for this, is I'm going to click on his uh, picture here in the tree, and up comes the collection of Jim Barber. Now I can collapse this. When you're first setting up anyone's page, um, you set up chapters. And if you do this, you, could, you say add a chapter here, 
uh, you can see as many chapters as you want. Our family collection has maybe 10 chapters, 12 chapters, uh, but it could be any way you want to organize it, almost like you're writing a book for that person. So if I add a chapter, I can either type in what I want, or we even have a drop down menu of different ideas that you might want. For example, best, let's just say best when young. We don't have a young section yet for Jim Barber. I don't need a description, although it's optional. So I'm going to save that. And you can see here, now if I collapse again, here's our new chapter, Best One Young. And I'm going to take that, I want to move that up here to be the first chapter in his collection when I see it. And now we're going to see, we want to add what I call linked album. Linked album is the term again we use because remember, a key part of Collection Air is we are not storing your photos. Those photos are in another cloud site of your choice or multiple sites. If I chose to use Flickr, that's where they'd be. And so if I go here and say, let's add a linked album, I, you can see here, I have two tabs open. I have some other Gmail tabs, but I have my collection air tab. And over here is Flickr, which I opened in advance of this meeting. And just as I said, once again, just like my Google photo albums, I've created albums in Flickr. But look at this, a 2005 Lake Cottage, my young son, 25 years ago, learning to play golf, a trip to Disney World, uh, pictures of our house, my parents' family. I mean, one thing has no semblance to another. Uh, the grandfather that broke the 100-yard dash, uh, years at Disney, those kind of things. So they're all there. So, But what do I want to do? Let's see here. Here is uh, an album I created of my wife's father, Jim Barber, when he was young. Photos from youth, 108 photos. And each has their own system, but it's very simple. Once I create that uh, album, um, I can go to this arrow. This is Flickr system. It says share this album. I click that little button. Now I go here and I copy that. It's a uh, command C on Mac, control C uh, or right click uh, save. There's a lot of different ways to say that, but you save that, uh, this URL. It's not, a, it's not this URL up here. Uh, and I explain why, but it's a very specific private URL that allows anyone with this to see this album of Jim Barber and nothing else in my collection. So I'm gonna take this now and I'm gonna go back to Collection Air and I'm gonna say, let's add to this best one young, let's add our first linked album to that. And I'm gonna say uh, young or young Jim, photos from, California. Uh, sorry, not a good typer here, but I'd go back and correct that. Um, and now if I scroll down a little bit, this is the magical piece of collection error. I'm going to paste, you can right click paste, command V, control V, but right click will do it. And I just put in that URL share link uh, from Flickr that I got. And now we've done a couple of other things here with some of the sites with Collection Air, I can just click this generate a preview image. So when I click that button, that actually goes back to that album in Flickr and says, this is the album that I had chosen as the primary photo for that album to represent that album. And I'm using that now to save it. And that's gonna be the little link image in Collection Air. I can also then set, um, I'm having to move the uh, zoom controls for a moment. Okay, but I can set this as one of three levels of privacy, something that all viewers can see or friends and family, or I could make it private. If I wanted to make it uh, private for just my immediate family, anything I make private, I would give my family private permissions. No one else would get private permissions. And so no one else would even know this album existed. But in this case, I'm gonna market friends and family so most people can see it. And if it were really exceptional, I might wanna use a star rating. This is optional, but let me just say, these are great photos. I'm gonna put a two star just for fun on it. And then I'm going to save it down here. So I'm having to move these controls out of the way a little bit. So there we scroll back up and there we are. There's our album of Young Jim. You can see it's located in Flickr, it has two stars. I can do a number of things with it. I can uh, as I share it with people, they can comment on it and say, 
oh, I can't believe you found that photo. I've been looking for it for a long time or whatever. Any comment on this collection of photos? Um, I can share it other ways, I can edit it. And now you can see just like on the tree, if I scroll over that and click on it, I'm going to do that now, it opens another tab. And here are those 108 photos of young Jim Barber in the 1930s, including some of his artwork, his parents from Porterville. And if I wanted to get more specific with that, I could. Um, I could break it into different albums. I could have 20 albums. I could have thousands of photos. Uh, I could make a copy of a photo album, put it in here, a lot of different things. So that is the basic concept of how Collectionaire works. And this is the collection. Over here, every person gets a narrative. They're, when they're born and died, uh, and a narrative of their, their life that's a, a nice presentation of the story of Jim Barber, if you want to write that. Um, he was, if I expand all these things, we see his life, I mentioned earlier, his high school life, is a family scrapbook that we have. Uh, here's his, his Navy years. If I click on that, we see his, uh, when his wife pinned his wings on him uh, back in 1950, I think it was, there we are. Uh, so every, uh, every tidbit, every memory item that I can find, my wife can find in a box anywhere on Jim Barber, keeps getting added to his collection. And now the children will have more. Indeed, some of these things are even like, are not even owned by us. But because of this linking capability, we're able to go in this case, for example, he flew the TPM, the Torpedo Bomber Avenger, which was a famous plane from Midway, uh, very heroic. It was the, the plane that uh, George H.W. Bush flew and got shot down in a very dangerous plane, almost suicidal to fly it. Here's the aircraft carrier he landed on. And I just clicked on that. And it didn't open me to my Google photos. It opened me to Wikipedia, where someone can read about the carrier that he landed on and, and flew from here. So it's anything we can find on Jim Barber. If we had videos of these things, here's a, a video in YouTube that talks about the torpedo bomber uh, and things. So all this is collected into creating a richer profile of Jim Barber, even his family search and ancestry collections. I think if I do this, it will open. I, oh, I need to sign in to do that. But if you're signed in uh, to this, perhaps this will do it. If I've got the right sign in. Here's Jim Barber uh, as he appears in Family Search. So uh, there might be things in here that we, that we want to see uh, in his records that are maybe not in ours. Like this is a, this map feature is a great feature of his different places in California. Uh, so anything that, this is the theme of this. We're not telling you what to put in a collection, but anything you find on Jim Barber that you want to add, there's now a way to do it. So that's kind of that scenario. I'm gonna pause again, because there probably are a couple of questions on this part before I go to the next. If not. Okay, no, okay, class. I, I have a few questions if, if the class does, and I'll give the class a, a chance first. Anybody want to unmute your microphone and ask a question? Okay, yeah, oh, then I'll ask my questions then, giving the class another few minutes to, to unmute their microphone. Um, this, you know what this kind of reminds me of? It kind of reminds me of This Is Your Life. You know, the, the old t the TV show, mm -hmm. you know, where sure. they had documents and, right, right. and uh, videos and people talking, recordings, you know, this right. kind of thing. It kind of reminds me of this is your life. I, I kind of like the, the whole format. Um, and then also, can you merge chapters? Merge chapters. What you can do is if we go back to Jim Barber, I, you can move things around. That's the main thing. If I wanted to say, I don't want to, there's only one uh, album up here and when he was young, let's just move that into as the first chapter or the first entry in his life. I can move it out of there and go down and move it into here. And then I can get rid of that chapter. So that you can merge in that way. You can drag and drop and move things all around to reorganize someone's collection in almost any way. What I was thinking is like, let's say you did a, a young gym, but then you did school years, uh, like primary school, you know, right. secondary school, high right. school. And, and then later on, you decided, well, you know, that's too many chapters. I'd like right. to put primary school, middle school and high school all into one chapter. Can you just merge them? 
Well, there's two, th that's a great question. Really good question. I'm gonna show it to you this way. How am I gonna do this? The best way to do this. I'm gonna go back uh, and find a way. Um, that you've actually asked a little more advanced uh, question. I guess you shouldn't be surprised for your good thinking there. But I'm gonna to go to my family collection, which is about where I was going to go a moment ago. And here's, here's an example is um, in my family, here are my chapters, collapse them here. Our wet started with our wedding and then uh, a few trips. I'm still adding to this part, family through the years, things like this. If I go to this from photos of my wife and me, you can see the best photos of us together. You see this number two, we call this line item an entry, but if I click on that, it's actually two different linked albums, one in Google and one in SmugMug that I happen to have created. So I could create, and as I, I think if I go back down on the list here, I may find some with even, even more. I know I do uh, as I get down into, um, here was a trip to Scotland, for example. I wanted, this is, a, this is a good way to show it, kind of like, it's not exactly your example, but on our best vacations, I wanted each line item to represent one vacation. Uh, but in this one, I had three things. I maybe had a, I might've had a journal, I might have photos and I might have a video. Uh, this three represents three things. So there's actually one more subdivision that you can do. And that is that you can put um, as many linked albums into one light item entry as you can see. So here we are, the photos in Smug Mug. Um, a, this is a 44 minute video you can see by the line item there. Uh, and here are uh, the photos. And if I click on any of them, for example, if we click here, photos of, of this place where we went, kind of a magical place back then. Um, here are the photos of that trip. If I go back to here and click on this, it should bring up in Google the video of Scotland. Here we are at the airport getting ready to go. Where are we going? We're, we're going. Go ahead and get in, back your bags. Well, there you go. That's the grandparents keeping the baby at home with the four of us headed out on our first trip there. Uh, so you can see I'm streaming videos right from uh, the point that is important to this vacation. So it's pretty cool that way you can do this. So if you're talking, uh, Suzanne, about your, uh, your class, if you wanted, you could have, this could be uh, best of high school and you click on it and it could say, you know, all four years, you know, from that standpoint. Does that answer your question a little bit? Yes, so you thank can, you. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So you can combine um, them pretty much any way you want. There's three levels of hierarchy, the chapter, the what we call the entry. And then if, if, if an entry only has one item in it, it's one and the same, but it can have multiple linked albums. Again, a linked album is called that because it links to that album wherever it is. So, so if, you, if you had three chapters for someone's school life, you could just simply link the other chapter into the, each chapter. And that way, when they click on one, it'll show all of them, correct? Exactly, exactly. Okay, I got it. Okay. So all right, uh, we, we did get a question uh, in the chat box. Catherine uh, says, so collection error is a way to organize what is stored in other programs, question mark. My confusion is deciding between so many other options for storing first. Good question. We have a pretty good help section and I'm, uh, we're about ready to bolster it. If you look here on the top of every banner is help and support. Um, and uh, this is the help section. This right here, the first thing you see are the F fr frequently asked questions, but these are all help options. And one of them is which cloud sites should I use? Uh, one is what's best for photos, what's best for home movies. And in that we, have written up what we think are the important things to know. And we evaluate several like memory web, several sites you may never, never have heard of that may be better at permanently storing photos than uh, say Google or Apple. So there are a lot of help topics within Collectionaire. All this is viewable by the way, collectionaire.com. It's all viewable for free. 
You can actually, you can build your family tree as large as you want, also for free. And you can add up to 20 of these albums before you have to pay. It's then, a, it's then uh, an annual fee. Basic fee is $36 a year, which is $3 a month. Um, and we're, you'll see at the end of this, we give you a coupon if you want to try it out and get more than that or whatever. But you can go quite a ways for free in this. And you can always access help and other things. Uh, or write to me or our help section for any questions you have. But uh, there, but I'm I'm in the process right now. My direction is uh, creating albums in Google Photos, then converting those into either a, a permanent or forever. Uh, two different programs that are there that you buy memory once, and in theory you have it for 100 years. So it creates the permanence of your your collection, and we're going that way as well with Collectionaire. Anyway, other there, I'm sure this is all, it's a lot to throw at anybody all in one. So um, no question is a dumb question because that's the only way we improve this product is by seeing where, what we've glanced over. But hopefully you've gotten the basic concept here. Uh, I'll stop again, Suzanne, in case there's another question, then I'll, I'll keep going. I have another question. Um, I, one of the things I've really been, um, trying to encourage the students in my class to use is uh, StoryCorps. Uh, now StoryCorps, I guess you can put it into uh, Collectionaire in one of a couple ways, I guess. You could probably just do the, the link. You know, if you right, make the right, recording right. public, you can just import the link into right. Collectionaire. Or I assume if you save it as an MP3 to your, uh, or an MP4 to your computer, you could also link it there too, as long as it's in the cloud, correct? Exactly. As a matter of fact, I'll show you one. I, I know I've got a story core item in here, but I'll show you a quick one of an audio recording. Um, when I was with my dad, uh, he's gone in and out of, of health. He's pretty good right now at 92. Uh, here he is. And when I was home about a year and a half ago, uh, this is his collection that I'm still building. And on his career, here it is, Jim talks about his career. If I click that, that takes me to Google Photos. and an audio recording. It should uh, pull up here from Google. Here we are. So, close out those receivables by seeing them. No, this wasn't a great, uh, this wasn't set up to be so a recording. I, I said, Dad, you're telling some good stuff. Can I record this? So I just put my phone down and at least it's there. It's something crazy. I don't know. Can you hear that yeah, audio, by the way? Yes. Maybe. This, this is okay. how I work here. I mean, they're paying me. I'm not going to settle my butt over here. Sorry for the language of my father. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one point. Uh, so, but the point is you can put, this is the whole goal of collection air. Anything I can find on any person gets added into this. You know, in his case, his Navy years and other things. He was a big golfer, all those things. So, his golf things, his inventions. He built our home from scratch by himself. He, all of these things that I wanted to archive and keep uh, you know, for years to come. And I'll, I'll tell you with my uh, mother who's just turned 89, she literally, I told you this the other day, Suzanne, she cried when she saw this because they're divorced um, and she never remarried. And she really thought when she dies, she's going to be forgotten. No one will ever have any idea. And when she saw this collection of her life from young photos, she did a, a video 30 years ago of her heritage, the home she's lived in. You talk about maps. I even did this map on Google that shows all the places that she talked about that where she used to, and this is in Butler, Indiana. Here's a Google map. Uh, we're in Northeast Indiana. And these are all the places, the place that there you can see the Great Lakes and everything, so you know where we are. But all of these can have photos attached to them. I haven't built it all out yet, but I'm doing it. But the church, the one room church she went through right there. And if someone wanted to go visit that church, you know, it's there. Uh, so maybe my grandkids or great grandkids will take the tour of the Bryant family back in little town of Butler, Indiana to see all these things. This is uh, where the, the cemetery, where the Bryant family is buried, most of them, et cetera. So again, Collectionaire could never create a product to 
create a map program like this, create video streaming like Google or Vimeo to create audio recordings, to PDFs, all these things. But everyone else does a great job of this stuff. So we don't try to recreate it. We just are a hub where we bring it all together. Uh, and that's the simple point. So this is uh, how that works. I, I, when I was at Disney, I took her to the Academy Awards one year, it was a big thing and all that stuff. So, and these are some of her videos and even the home movies she had, many of them being the kids. I'm gonna add, a, a, I'm gonna show you something here that's kind of cool. Um, if I uh, wanted to know as much as I could about, I mean, what media do I have on her mother, Mildred, who lived to 100, I could go up here to the search and I could search um, for linked albums with the word Mildred. And up would come all of the albums in here where in either the title or the description that we've added for that video, the word Mildred, her mother. So there's one from 91, here's 1990, this tour Butler, uh, all of these things, Mildred photos. Um, so you can see here that we can quickly find a pretty rich collection of, of Mildred as a child. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you one other crazy one here. This is Mildred in high school. Okay, was it, I'm sure many of you saw it last year. Um, it was My Heritage came out with this incredible, crazy app. And I decided, okay, I'm gonna try it on my grandmother. She looks a little cross-eyed here, but this is a photo from like her prom in about 1922, I think it was. There she is to the right. And um, you got the info that is in there. And this, I don't know if any of you saw this, but it, it, you could take a static picture of somebody and make it come alive. So look at this, it's crazy. But, and if you haven't seen it, but everyone saw this. Now she looks a little cross-eyed there, but it takes a static picture and it makes this person come alive. And once again, what do you do with these things if you find them? What do you do with a slideshow? Well, we've created a way now that you can store that and see it. So I think that's pretty, pretty great. Uh, so there it is, this video and we stored it. And so we've got this picture. I've got a similar one, if I go down, uh, here, uh, and going back to the tree, another one of those, uh, of my, I don't need to show it, of my mother. Uh, so um, unless you have another quick question, I'll show you one more thing here that I think is, I've got a few other things. Are you okay, Suzanne? Yeah, we're doing great on time. Okay, so the, the next thing I wanted to show was, I mentioned earlier, remember the Bryant family that goes back to 1645, Stephen coming in just after the pilgrims, uh, landed at near Plymouth, but settled in a town called Situate. Uh, it's still there, Situate's about 20 miles north of Plymouth. Uh, and there's the story of, of Stephen. And I thought, do we, how would I do this? How does Ancestor do it? What is it? Do I have to go all the way back, uh, hoping there's something in the 1600s that's in this thing? No, I don't. If this Bryant here, that's what this family history flag means. That means family history of the surname of that person. So if I click on this, you say it even says, clicking this flag takes you to a collection page dedicated to the family history for this family line. So since the most recent Bryant in my family uh, ended with my paternal grandmother, Mildred, that we just saw, I click not on her, but on the flag. And now you see the Bryant family history. And you see photos, videos, this is that cemetery I talked to you about, that Zion Church. I'm actually gonna copy, uh, as a matter of fact, I could do this. I'll go back, I've wanted to do this. I'll do it live to show you. Um, if I go to my wife's, my wife, my mother's collection here, and I said, you know what, that I like that map of where she grew up. I can go here to this little clone thing and I clicked it, it says linked album copied. Now I go back here. I'm going to go into the family search for the Bryants because most of the little places in the map were Bryant locations. I'm going to click on this flag and uh, Bryant family info and photos. Let's put it right here. Add a linked album. 
paste the one I just did. Friends and family look fine to me. I've got to move uh, my Zoom out of the way. Uh, and I'm going to save it. So now that same map I did for my mother actually pertains more to the Bryant family. So here's a map of where the Bryants are buried and other things. I just put it into the Bryant heritage right here. And this is a, this is a reunion we just had uh, last year. And so some one of the members did it. And here's my uh, cousin on his tractor back in Indiana. Family, our great grandfather. Married in 1896, and this was his first home. Okay, so there you go. I don't know if you heard that, but he was saying, we took the tractor out in the back country on the Ohio-Indiana line, hayride thing. It was pretty cool. Um, and he would, he's kind of the family historian of that site. This was the, uh, the barn that we had there for the reunion. And uh, he would tell these stories of, of, uh, all of our grandparents and other things, we recorded them and then they're in collection air. Now, all of these people have access to these stories that were in his head. So as you can see, I could ramble for kind of hours on this, but that's what genealogy is, isn't it? Um, and the point of this is there were really three types of collections that we saw. There was the individual collection where each person going all the way to my daughters have their own special memories Next, the family and every her, she, is her, she and her husband. If I click on that, so starting with her wedding, here's the official wedding video, rehearsal dinner, wedding photos, etc. All those are there, and then going from a family collection like this one of her up to uh, all the way up to what I just showed you now of uh, of the extended uh, family uh, heritage. So. Uh, what I'm going to show you here, though, is how it had, Suzanne, you asked this question, how do I share this? Very simply, I can go to guest permissions and invitations to view my collection. And if I wanted to add, this is a list of people that I have in here. And if I wanted to invite Suzanne, I could simply click here, type her email. Uh, I think it's S, uh, then your last name, but sorry, I'm misspelling here but I could type in your email, a message to you. I would say, what level of permissions do I want? I'll give you friends and family permissions that you can see. And I could say, if I wanted, if Suzanne was a, a cousin, I might say, well, I'm gonna click you as a editing permission can add, meaning you can't delete anything I've added, but you can add things to this if you have them to add. And I'd welcome that. Or I could give, if I'm working with another organizer, I can click full edit. We both now can edit this. But that's how you share this. And uh, Stanley, Stanley, this full edit allow them to delete? Yes, it does. Okay. That's why it's a dangerous button to push. <laughs> you, only, you only want that with your responsible children uh, so they don't delete anything. But mind you, remember, you're only deleting from collectionaire. You're not deleting those photos that are in Smug Mug or Flickr or something. Remember, it, there's two levels of this. Uh, and that's uh, why that's there. So, and these again are all the people and all the permissions that they have of people that I've shared. Some can view, view every, uh, can view all as green. Uh, they can view everything except private. Uh, maybe someone can only do see private. And this is the edit permissions that I've got. Um, so, a lot of actions here. I could take one person here, and uh, I could edit permissions. This was a test trial we had. And I could say, I don't want this person, we're done now, they imported what they have, I'm gonna change their permissions to no edit permissions and save that. And I just changed it. So um, I can go back then to the tree. Um, I need a back to tree uh, element on this, I see that. So I can only go to view collections and back to my two step to my tree. But I also, I'll, I'll point out on the search, I mentioned on the search that we can look for something in your family. I can also get a list of all uh, the people and the couples. Uh, couples are uh, here in red, individuals in blue. Um, when I click on them, 
this is my brother, for example, and his wife, I can either go to their tree location or to their memory page. If I go to the tree location, uh, here they are here. Right here, my brother and his wife. So, and you see their tree view of just their children on up to our parents. So, um, so anyway, that's, that's the product and it's working pretty darn well, just as, uh, as we intended. And we're adding features to it all the time. Like, again, it, we're right in the middle as a partner, new partner of Family Search, invited by them uh, to, uh, to be a partner. So by Roots Tech end of February, we'll have the option of uploading their Family Search tree into Collectionaire. But again, it's working just as, as planned. Yes, Wendy. So, hi, um, thank you. Uh, my question is, so I was thinking how you adding family members. So like your brother, once you load the information in and your brother's hooked to your tree, does all that stuff above populate into, uh, his, into his albums? Well, no, nothing populates. Uh, when you say, here, let me say this. I, I could interpret this a couple of ways, so I don't want to ramble on. Uh, let me be clear. When I add my brother to the tree, nothing is added to his collection. Okay. Okay. There's nothing that automatically, now with family search, we're talking about some memories being imported, but generally nothing is added. Um, and so we have to add it. But uh, if he were to view my tree, of course, he's seeing everything of the parents. For example, right here uh, is, you know, our parents and this button is the collection of my parents. So everything up to when we all individually got married uh, are before they were divorced is in this collection. So I can click that and he'll see all of this, of course, because it's all on the tree. These are photos of when we were young, the family photos, the home we grew up in then, our family vacations back in the 60s to Disneyland and other things. He can, these he can click and stream all these. So he's got access to everything of when he was a child of the family, but I have not yes. added since the, since his marriage, I've not started building his collection. Now I could share it with him. I could give him add privileges or edit privileges and he could add to that. Right, I guess my thing is I just didn't, if my cousin and I were working on something together, I just wanted to make, I wanted to make sure that if I put something in there and he puts, we're all gonna be able to see it up, up above, I guess. You know, like say if it was for our grandparents. Yes, so yes, yes. It's without added duplicating work. Right. Without du okay. I will say one thing. People often ask, how how do you connect with different things? So I'm going to go back here and show you something here is that uh, my daughter, I'm going to go back to, I'm going to go back. I'm the home person on this tree. So rather than going click and finding me, I can just go here and click that home button and it comes up with me here. <laughs> but one thing I thought you might be going this and maybe it might be part of your correction. Uh, by the way, the, these were some, this is the real child. <laughs> these are, I was showing a demo and showing how easy it is to add a person and added two, two more babies, I guess. Um, but um, if I look at my daughter's collection here, one of the things I can do is that if you go back here, she has her own collection that she started now with her husband right here. And here's that collection. Um, of their own and it you're we're looking at her husband's right here her husband's side of the tree his siblings and his parents okay they're not on my tree so if I go back to my own tree view collections I'm gonna go back to to mine well I can get to her tree two different ways one is uh, I could do what I just did is go up here to view collections and click on it the other thing is if I go to her collection page, like right here, I one of the quick, we call it quick links I have is her, her, her own collection page. So if I click this, their family tree, or this, their collection, I would go out of my, this is my collection for her that ends after her wedding day, frankly. I don't have anything more after that day on her life, okay? Uh, but if I click this, I jump out of my own collection and I'm now in her collection if that makes sense. So as she adds to this collection, I do not have edit uh, capabilities of this. As they add to this collection, they've given me access to view it. But they could have given you editing if they'd wanted to. Yes, if they really liked me, they would have, yeah. <laughs> 
So anyway, that's how that's how that works. So everyone can have their own and it branches out. Uh, I have people that all have their own collections. I have families that have 15 people on the tree and they're all adding and editing cousins and everybody. Yes, Wendy, another follow up. Or um, is it? That was just, yeah, sorry. That was for my, my, my earlier one. Okay. Um, so I guess uh, I did have another question. Um, so if I, Right, so then that means I have to go, I'd have to click into, so like I was you, I, was, I wanted to see my daughter's collection. I'd have to, I'd have to know to go into that link to pull up her stuff. And then your, so then your grandson, if he was creating something, you'd have to, you'd have to click, keep clicking deeper and deeper. Is that right? Well, could depends, you, it, yeah, I mean, could if, you, I'm sorry, could go you ahead. Hook the, could you just automatically hook your daughters and your grandsons to yours? So when you opened yours up, you could see all that, or I, is that not the idea? No, I, I could do that. Let's, 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 I'll just show you how I, I might do it. Let's go to her collection. I'm going first to her. This is, I know this is confusing. This is her in my collection. I just clicked on the tree. Now I'm going to go over to, actually, I needed to go to the couple, not to her individually, but to um, their family collection right here and let's get to their tree and they haven't added the photo for little Scotty yet but I could do this if I click on this unlike what I said about share links um, I could since it's still in collection air I could copy the URL for Scotty there I could then go back to my own family tree. And again, I don't, uh, these are these are fictitious things. This is the real little guy. I click my own and I looks like I may have already done this. Uh, I can add a link, link to Scotty in Claire Collin collection. And here is that URL. I, it won't generate an image. I would have to add my own image, which I could do. Um, and, and maybe here's how, maybe I'll do it this way. I'll show you how to add an image here. I'm gonna do a quick, uh, I'm taking a little bit of a risk here, see if I can pull this out of memory. I'm doing it quick, it's not looking. So I just took a snapshot of that little screen grab I'm now gonna go into this that I just created, hit the edit button. I'm going to add a little preview image right here from my photos uh, desktop. Just took it, should might show up there. That, this is why I don't love Max. I never know where they stick some of these images. Uh, this is not it, this, this is not it. This is not a problem with collection error. This is a problem with me, is that I sometimes have trouble finding where I put things in. Uh, in are you say, are you are you do you have your Mac set to save to the cloud? Because if it does, it takes a few moments for it to be downloaded to your no, desktop. No, that, that's not it. I think I used. I get confused between Control Shift Control Command Four and just Shift Command Four. Uh, anyway, I could do this. Find that image, and. Uh, and stick it in there. That would be uh, that would be the preview image for uh, this person. So uh, so that's that's how we do that. Okay. Uh, now and, uh, Jill Jill has a, a couple questions. Jill, do you want to unmute your microphone <laughs> and ask Stanley? Yeah, please. Can you hear me? Yes, we I can. Guess. Yes. So I, um, right now I pay for iMemories program. Does this also work with that program? Uh, good question. I don't know. You know, I tried iMemories once uh, when I was looking for a solution for myself. Uh, that's now three years ago. And I'm afraid I don't recall the details of how it operates or how it shares. My sense is, well, again, 
the whole key is that for any uh, collection, if I go to Google Photos here and had this, uh, Google Photos has this little share icon. If I want to share just this photo of the reunion, click there and it, I, it says I can get a link here, create the link. And so I know that Google will let me put it in collection here because I can get a share link. So if I memories, I'd be glad to research that and I'll send a note to Suzanne. I think I may even have an iMemories account, but the key will be, does iMemories, making a note here, does iMemories allow a share link to enable you to go in and see a memory in iMemories? If it does, zip, you got it. You'll go into collection error with it. Okay. I appreciate that. I also had another question. When um, you start working with Family Search, will that just be the photos that will transfer what about the documents or stories uh, well uh, we're even hoping that the photos transfer initially right now in our tests we're transferring names relationships and dates of birth death place of birth and death uh into this and uh putting the people we're trying before the end of february to also add these profile images the circle images of the people and get those into our tree. Um, probably within a year, we'll be importing um, some of their memories into Collection Air, and they actually are more interested that we export our memories into uh, Family Search. So it'll go both ways. So you'll see that relationship growing over the next couple of years, I think. Right now, though, it's a simple tree, no images. Hopefully, by the end of February, we'll have at least images, but no memories. Okay, but of course, that'll be but, exciting. Thank you. But of course, if you have the link to the document in Family Search, you can just put that link into Collection Air, right? Uh, you can. Now, a little, a little tricky with Family Search and everything. As you saw there, when I clicked on Family Search for a parent, uh, it didn't. I'm going to go to my wife's again and do that. It didn't bring them up right away because I wasn't logged in. Because Family Search and Ancestry do not do this concept called the share link. So in those cases, I was literally entering the URL. If hopefully you've understood a little bit that differentiation. Again, <clears throat> if I go to Flickr here with this album, there's two ways to get to this album. If I'm already logged in and use that URL at the top, hey, no problem. But anyone else uses that URL, it's gonna say, what's your password? Uh, for entering into Stan Kinsey's collection. You say, well, I didn't do that. Uh, so you've got to be logged in to use a URL. URL. Same with Family Search and Ancestry. But the real cloud programs like Flickr, SmugMug, YouTube, et cetera, they give you this special URL, not the one up here, but the one down here that bypasses all uh, interface protocol and protections and allows you to see just this album and nothing else in the collection. So that was the magic sauce, so to speak, or magic element that enabled collection air to exist is that they're all using this, <clears throat> this common scenario. But with, with Ancestry and Family Search, uh, it is a question of whether you're logged in. Let's see if I go to Ancestry, very likely I'm not logged in there. I'm not, so if I go to log in for that, I just see I don't have the right password. So that's the danger of, and that didn't work. So I, I think we changed that because we were doing some development. So that's the problem with using something just with a URL and not with, um, and not with a share link. So in, to use family search and all these, anyone that you share this with is also gonna have to have their own account uh, and ability to see these in, in those locations. Okay, now that brings me to a question. Let's say the person you're working with has a family search account, um, but, but you're talking about somebody who's alive still, like, like your daughter or your grandchild. Right, right. Um, in, if, if that daughter and grandchild's in your family search tree, only you can see that because that's a living person. Uh, a cousin of yours can't see it unless they have that same person in their tree as a living person. Yeah, that's a good point. It's well known. Uh, what, what, you, you understand the program as well. Again, that's why we, we don't list those. That's why they're not over here as primary 
access points um, uh, for sharing in that the family search and ancestry aren't really built to do what we're doing with collection air, but they still work in some ways, but you're still under the constraint of whatever rules those sites put in place. So as you said, if uh, a person in your family is still alive, then someone who's not in your family cannot see them on your tree, even if they have access to your tree. I think that's what you're saying, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. However, uh, in Ancestry, you can you can share that. You can you can set it for living persons. But in Family Search, unless you have that person that's alive in your tree, you won't be able to share that. Right. Right. So and that's so that's why to us it's just it's over here as a little side link for keeping track of things for those close to the family, <clears throat> uh, and uh, and not part of what we call the primary collection here. Okay, now uh, one of the questions, I know you have to leave in just a few moments. Um, one of the questions that I'm getting in the chat box is, uh, what happens if the person that you're working with doesn't have, a, doesn't have a paid account? But you had touched on that earlier that there was all kinds of free space available, correct? You could, anyone, I, if, had I shared with you up here in guest permissions, as I said, and put that in, you will, because of controlling these permissions, uh, we do ask you, just like Facebook and Instagram and others, ask you to have an account, but it's a free account forever. Uh, you only get charged if you add more than 20 memories into it. So if you're there just to view someone else's account, you need to, to, you need to register, but it's then free to use uh, forever. And then one of the things that you and I touched on uh, earlier this week when we were talking is a legacy situation. What happens if you don't have children and, and uh, maybe you have nieces and nephews, but you know a generation or two from now that niece and nephew's children probably aren't gonna know anything about you. How would they find your legacy that you've left behind in Collection Air? Okay, you, you've gone uh, two steps into the advanced uh, world um, and I'm not sure we've gotten to two steps. We've gotten to one step, uh, this way, in that if I go to my account, I can, and if I have a paid account, I can go to personal information account preservation, and I can add two living people, either my own children or grandchildren, that if I don't respond to queries, if my account goes unpaid, we at Collectionaire do not delete your account. If you filled out, you can have two successors here. Here you can see my wife is the first one under mine. Um, and I can keep put her information in and I can put a second in. Those people are contacted if I don't respond to queries, if, I, if my credit card is declined, uh, we will go to these people to see if they want to continue uh, the account. Now, uh, the, at this point, if we don't have those as successors, we would not have a person to go to. If someone in the family discovers that they had a collection error, if someone left a note in a desk drawer and says, hey, I have a collection error account, my name is uh, you know, Sandra Wilson, and here's my passwords, and they go in and find this, uh, if it's within a year, we can re restart that account. If it's longer than that, it could be lost. And you and I spoke the other day, that we are considering a, an account preservation, uh, a perpetuity program that would allow a person to pay one time and that account would stay for hundred years. And maybe we would add, continue to add successors. Um, and maybe we, with that, we would continue to find ways to reach one's offspring. Uh, we're kind of following the lead of other programs. Facebook just started this kind of thing. Uh, forever and some of the other accounts have it so we're if anyone has any great ideas on this let us know but we're trying to follow others that have kind of done this account preservation uh to put in but right now uh people seem generally pleased and many people use this successor and are comforted just knowing that if something were to happen to them they pay their account their kids can take over the account later or and at any time you could choose to move the entire account over to a child or grandchild without a successor, just have it, you could pay it on your credit card and they could uh, keep it going in their name. Uh, and if that account were declined on, on, on that or in the $3 a month, it's actually charged once a year, $36 for a base account. Uh, then if that were declined, these other people would get access to 
uh, see if they want to continue the, the account history. Wonderful. Okay, I see it's, it's one o'clock our time, and I think that's when you said you had to leave. Um, but I wanted to remind everyone, you want to just speak very briefly about the coupon that you sent out to everybody this morning through my email? Okay, well, again, if you do wish to go to Collection Air, let's sign out here um, uh, and go out. We go to Collection Air, the homepage. If you scroll down, uh, you can create a, a free account up here at the top. Uh, and at any point, you can go in and buy an account, or you can scroll to the bottom here and go straight to create Oh, create your free account, and then from there you can, you or and you can do this, or you could. I think you can even. Let's go back here. Click if you want it. When you go into buy an account, like a basic, you can buy basic. You don't have to buy pro. When you get large enough, it'll convert into pro. But if I click the basic plan, uh, this takes me there. I can start this. You can enter when you go in through the transaction screen. You will have to enter a credit card, but when you enter that coupon you'll get 50% off your first two years with Collection Air. So it would be $18 a year rather than that. Uh, but again, you can start for free with a free account without paying anything. I think we'll have this coupon good for uh, at least a couple of weeks here. So um, if you do get interested, you can use it then. Wow, $18 a year, that's, a, <laughs> that's less than a cup, <laughs> two cups of coffee. <laughs> uh, well, these days it is, yes. No, it is true that at some point, let me say one other thing. At some point, we're going to likely raise the fee. We're kind of still not in beta mode because we're three years into it, but just making sure that people are happy with the program and they seem to be very pleased and uh, uh, several thousand using it now. And we're probably going to raise pricing, but if you register and start at a certain price, 36 a year, even if we go to 99 a year, we're grandfathering in that price. Uh, for a lifetime. So no one will ever pay more than they initially did. Wow. We're never going to raise the price on someone with a long-term basis. So. Wow, that's wonderful. Okay, well, um, I, I don't want to keep you because you had mentioned that you had to go, but I wanted to say thank you very much uh, for joining us today, Stanley, and thank you for allowing us to record as well. Okay, and let me, let me say one thing before I go. Um, I, my team uh, filters a lot of the contact us. If you go to Collection Air, and at the very bottom it says contact us, uh, they'll get those queries to me and anyone on this call, I welcome any question as, as simple or complex or challenging as you wanna make it, even how to get started, whatever. Um, I, I'd be honored to answer your questions. So thank you again, Suzanne, and uh, we'll follow up after the session. I'll, I'll be in touch this week, okay? Thank you, Stanley.